they're right. When people ask me about this, I say, it's the dogs. <laughs> and the thing that impressed me about these dogs, uh, and why I love them so much, when I'm at my niece's house and we get the dog food out for her Westie, we don't exist. It's the food in the dog dish, and she's just totally wrapped up in that. This is a different experience. We'd get down there and you'd have about 50 dogs howling. Musically, it was beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. It's just, I wish we would have recorded it. But anyway, I expected when I put the food into their tray, dog tray, they would ignore us. Not a single dog went to the food until we acknowledged them, affirmed them, recognized, and make, made contact. I thought that was just wonderful. They, they're like people. The other thing they said about them, they were so wholehearted about what they wanted to do. In the beginning, I was saying, gee, i got to feel sorry for this dog. they got to pull us. They wanted to pull us. They couldn't wait to pull us. And Trisha and I, this was really funny, our dogs were the fastest. <laughs> they might have been the smartest. I don't know. But anyway, we'd always catch up with the sled ahead of us. And so we try to hold them down. And we try to hold them down. And as soon as they see the other dogs going, they were pulling, pulling, pulling. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, when they get about a half mile from home, they know they're going to be fed. And so they start going like crazy. Well, we had to go across a road into where the dogs are, and it was packed down pretty well. So there, were Tr there was Trish and me, and we were hanging on, and we were saying, whoa, whoa. And we were breaking and breaking, and the dogs, instead of going with this, also crashed right into the kennel. Or the food. Well, then that was, that was our first mistake. Second one, I thought, well, I can take Curly. She's the smallest dog. Her brothers are Larry and Mo. And I had a real soft spot in my heart because last year when she pulled my sled, she was pregnant. So she's the first dog I wanted to check on. I always give her extra food last year. <laughs> well, her puppies didn't survive, and they said she was really too young to be a mother. Anyway, I thought, I can, I can take Curly. So I took Curly, and I unhooked her. And I was going to take her over to her spot, and she was pulling me across the road. And some of the guys had to come and rescue me. But anyway, what I want to say about the dogs, they are totally wholehearted. And what they did was they brought us all together, and they brought out the best of us. Uh, we were given compliments, Sister Trish and I, but uh, the compliments go to the students. They were just wonderful. They were themselves. They were generous. They were honest. They were funny. They were serious. Uh, the dogs brought us together and made us into a community, but so did the students. And so if you ever get a chance, go for it. I've done it twice now, and I'm 71 years old. If I can do it, when they said there were challenges, I never once fell off the sled. The guide was worried about me. And she said, the, most, the person I'm most worried about is Sister Catherine. And I said, oh. I said, I get it. I could break a hip. <laughs> right. I could. People my age break hips. And I said, but I think you should know I don't have osteoporosis. And at the end of it, she gave me my biggest compliment. She said, my worries about you were groundless. I didn't need to be worried. So if I can do it, all of you can do it. Right? Right. right. <laughs>